So we'll look at hard margin classifier. That's the basic uh, support vector machine. We have uh, points uh, in n-dimensional space, uh, Xs, and uh, they also have uh, labels. On one side, the labels are plus one, which is Y, and on the other side, Y equals negative one. And our goal is to uh, define a classifier, uh, which is a hyperplane, and the hyperplane will have its margin, uh, which is uh, shown uh, in green, and uh, the green region uh, is the, I mean, the region that's shaded green is uh, the forbidden region, data points should lie outside the green region. They shouldn't be arbitrarily close to the hyperplane, which is the line in the middle. This is the hyperplane. This is the maximum margin. And uh, our goal is to uh, find a hyperplane which maximizes the margin. So uh, if the maximum margin is gamma, then this is the hyperplane. Uh, w transpose x plus b equals zero defines the hyperplane. And all the points on this side, w transpose x plus b, will be less than equal to negative half of gamma because this distance is half gamma and this distance is also half gamma. Therefore, w transpose x plus b should be greater than uh, half gamma for points on the other side. Uh, uh, corresponding to labels plus one, where whereas this corresponds to uh, labels negative one, the uh, 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 red negative points and the plus blue points. Okay, and for the two specific points that are on the borderline of the margin, the uh, inequalities are being replaced with equal signs. So. For x negative here, w transpose x plus b is exactly equal to negative half gamma. Likewise, for this point, x subscript plus uh, w transpose x plus b is equal to plus half gamma. And the way the SVM is formulated, we fix gamma at a value 2, and instead of maximizing gamma, we minimize half W transpose W, and that's geometrically equivalent to maximum margin. And uh, then we had our constraints. W transpose X plus, plus B was equal to one, and on this side, W transpose X negative plus B was equal to negative one. Now, we can take advantage of the labels. This label y plus corresponding to this x plus was plus one because it's a plus point. And likewise, this y minus was negative one, which corresponds to this uh, x negative. And so if you multiply the w transpose x plus plus b with a plus one, this would still be one. And this w transpose x negative plus b was negative one. If we multiply it with y minus, we'll still get a 1 because this and this were both equal to negative 1s. And so both expressions look the same. Uh, we don't have to have a plus 1 here and a minus 1 here uh, separately. And so this simplifies our condition. So, and for the other points, Likewise, we can do the same things because all these uh, plus points here have yi equals plus one, and so the constraint becomes yi w transpose xi plus b should be greater than one on this side. And on this side, likewise, since all the yi's are negative for points lying on this side of the hyperplane, yi w transpose xi plus b is strictly greater than one for all these points, and of course, for these points that are exactly on the borderline of the uh, margin, uh, the greater than signs are replaced with equal uh, to signs. So these are the active constraints, the x minus and the 
x plus correspond to active constraints and these correspond to inactive constraints, the other points. These are for the inactive constraints and these are for the active constraints. So we have the SVM formulation which is to minimize with respect to W and B, which defines the hyperplane. W and B are the parameters of the hyperplane. And we minimize half W transpose W. And our constraints for all points, it's the same thing, W, uh, excuse me, YI times W transpose XI plus B minus one should be greater than or equal to zero. So those are uh, our constraints and yi can be plus one or minus one. In both cases, we saw that the constraints are the same. So we don't have to outline two separate uh, constraints. So this is our objective. We have the training samples, xi, yi, consisting of n points. And our goal is to find a hyperplane, w transpose x plus b. This is in fact the maximum margin hyperplane. So we minimize half W transpose W. That's our objective function. And our constraints are for all points Xi, Yi times W transpose Xi plus B should be greater than or equal to one. So this is the primal problem. And uh, we can devise the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian is the objective function and um, I've taken a minus sign here because I have a greater than equal to and uh, this is the Lagrange multiplier lambda i and it should always be greater than equal to zero. So from the Lagrangian we can derive the dual and this is the dual. Uh, maximize the minimization now turns into a maximization maximize with respect to lambda of negative half lambda transpose h lambda plus lambda transpose one subject to y transpose lambda equals zero and lambda is greater than or equal to zero sorry for this it's uh, greater than or equal to zero and this quadratic term the h is given by this expression here And one observation is nowhere do we need specifically the points x, i's. We only are looking at the dot products or inner products x, i transpose x, j. And that's something that actually helps the um, uh, SVM. Okay, now the support vectors are the two points which corresponded to the active constraints. So the lambda, the Lagrangian multiplier was uh, one, excuse me, not one, but was non-zero, greater than zero uh, for these active constraints. And for the other points, the lambdas was equal to zero for the inactive constraints. So it's these two points for which lambda was equal to uh, non-zero. So here's our uh, support vector machine. Those support vector machines, uh, excuse me, those support vectors were the points, the two points for which the constraint was active. Lambdas were greater than zero. For all other points, the lambdas were uh, equal to zero. Those are the support vectors uh, which we need to store in memory later on after training the uh, support vector machine. And the B is calculated as uh, according to this expression. Now, you can take any one uh, active constraint to compute the B. But in practice, due to numerical reasons, uh, we take the set of support vectors and we take the average. So this is the summation of uh, Y minus uh, uh, lambda, summation lambda S minus uh, y s uh, x transpose um, s uh, x k and uh, this uh, summation and so so this is y k and this is x k that that's the index of the summation k 
and uh, we divided by the total number of support vectors. So this, in fact, this B is the average B of all support vectors. And with the numerical value of B determined, our classifier is ready. What I've done is, uh, it's not shown here, but the W, the weight, W transpose, can be replaced with this. This is W transpose. And that we we'll show separately with the derivation. And so our classifier is ready. W transpose X plus B greater than zero, then we classify, we label the unknown point X to B of plus one category. And likewise, if X, uh, which is the unknown point, if uh, this expression gives us less than zero, then we label that unknown point as belonging to the negative one category. So that's our classification algorithm once the training is done. And like I said, all we remember is the support vectors, the, the labels, the x's, and the lambdas of the support vectors is what we have to learn, uh, remember. So structurally, this is what uh, linear SVM looks like. Uh, the the x s transpose uh, X uh, replaced with kernels. So each of these corresponds to one of the support vectors. Uh, I've shown uh, so many support vectors in general, but um, uh, for the simple case, you'll just have two support vectors, one X plus and one X minus. Those are the only two support vectors. And uh, anyway, so each of these inputs corresponds to a support vector and each of them receives this X. So X goes in to all of these nodes here, and these compute the inner products, XS transpose X, and then these are the weights, lambda S, Y, S, that gives you each term like this. And then this summing unit is this summing here. It takes the sum of all the inner products with the weights, and then we add the bias to it. And then we take the sign to predict the label of the new sample point X. This is X. This is the label that was estimated by the linear SVM. The end.